In the ever-growing village of Dexter, Michigan, on the corner of Central and Huron, lies the Dexter Cider Mill. Established in 1886, the Dexter Cider Mill is a part of living history. My name is uh, Richard Kozyski and um, I bought the cider mill about 21 years ago and I've since sold it to uh, my uh, daughter and her family. Uh, so I'm not officially the owner any longer but they keep me around because uh, you know I'm kind of a part of the property now and uh, I know a little bit about cider so I can guide them in terms of um, the uh, proper blends and who to contact for issues and there are clearly a number of mechanical problems that occur when you have a mill that's over 120 years old so you know I'm around just to kind of help out now and I'm enjoying it strudel, even please. more than before because they now have all the responsibility and I could just sit back and take orders and enjoy myself. Now my daughter might have uh, have a uh, reason to think otherwise on that last point because sometimes I do interfere probably more than I should but uh, that's that comes with the territory when you're a father I have that privilege we bought it in 1880, uh, 1986 and we bought it from a family that had owned it 90 years so uh, when you add the 20 years that I've owned it and the 90 years that the previous owner had it it comes up to 110 years of the 120 year uh, existence of the cider mill. So uh, what I find unique about that the, being the fact that there's only a couple of owners uh, is that hardly anything has changed. The, uh, the operation is similar to what it was 120 years ago. Uh, much of the building that was here 120 years ago is still uh, up and operating. And incidentally, this is the oldest continuously operating cider mill in the state of Michigan, which is kind of a, a distinction uh, that we enjoy. Uh, my daughter, now that she's the, will be the fourth owner in her family, will uh, carry on the tradition, hopefully, to their children. The cider mill is home to the award-winning Dexter Cider Mill Apple Cookbook and five family-developed and locally milled packaged baking products, apple nut bread, walnut crumb topping, ginger snap cookies, applesauce fudge brownies, and apple cinnamon scones. Uh, we've never really had a, 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 any kind of an unusual experience. Uh, occasionally when um, canoers are coming down the river uh, or kayakers, uh, they'll tip over and we've been known to go in and pull them out. But having said that, that's probably uh, uh, very insignificant in terms of uh, other things that could possibly happen. But we've got some really, really wonderful publicity. There is a number of, of ex, uh, significantly uh, published um, uh, magazines within the state of Michigan that have identified the cider, this cider mill uh, along with one other uh, cider mill, Franklin, Michigan, as being one of the top uh, 101 things to do in uh, the metropolitan Detroit area. So with that kind of publicity, uh, I'm perfectly satisfied to sit back and enjoy the benefits of it and, and hopefully never have any notoriety that would result in negative publicity. Along with their natural cider, they offer fresh apples and donuts, caramel apples, and apple nut bread from their very own bakery. On weekends, they offer original homemade apple pies made from scratch and apple strudel. Also available are a number of apple-related products, jellies, apple butter, boiled cider, natural and vinegar-related products, barbecue sauces, and several locally grown products such as popcorn. But how does Michigan's oldest cider mill make cider? Well, cider is, um, is, is not exactly a no-brainer. To make the cider, apples from local orchards are delivered in crates. Once they are unloaded, the apples are checked for quality, washed, crushed, and sent down to the chute to be pressed. 
For the Dexter Cider Mill, pressing the apples is a family affair, with three generations working side by side. I think that was six. Going on seven. The, the important thing about uh, any kind of a product is to constantly focus on um, quality and freshness. And quality, of course, uh, involves making sure that uh, your process is, uh, is uh, well maintained and, uh, and health and um, safe for the public to use. Um, I might point out at this time that our cider is non-pasteurized, um, which means that people that have uh, compromised immu immune systems uh, probably should uh, not drink the cider unless they boil it. Uh, the same thing goes for young children under the age of two. They probably have not uh, have fully developed immune systems, and they shouldn't uh, drink it as well uh, unless they uh, they treated it by boiling it, uh, which essentially pasteurizes the cider by killing the any bacteria that might be in it. As far as uh, actually making the cider, uh, the, the again the most important thing is the freshness, and if you constantly focus on high quality fruit. Uh, that is fresh off the tree and um, is, is pressed uh, uh, with a variety of other apples. And we invariably blend our cider. We use uh, three or four uh, apples at a minimum. There are perhaps 40 or 50 apples that we use in, this, in, a, in a season, uh, many of which have those qualities. And what we try to do is incorporate them into the cider. And um, when we do that, what an effect we're creating is a totally unique taste. So uh, when we blend our cider, we, we uh, not only strive to, to accomplish that, but uh, we also focus on the fact that in the, in the early part of the season, apples are apt to be tart. So we have a, an early season cider, which uh, tends to be dry and tart, but a lot of people like it. We have a mid-season cider, which starts to develop some uh, sugar, and the sugar uh, changes the cider. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we get into late-season cider, where we have a wide variety of apples that have lots of sugar and uh, lots of color and lots of aroma. So in the late-season cider uh, is the third category of, of the cider. Uh, there is a bill currently in the state legislature. It's House Bill 4707. Uh, I testified a week ago to the uh, Michigan State Agricultural Committee uh, explaining the reasons why I thought that cider would be a good state beverage. The state currently does not have an official state beverage, so this fits in uh, timing-wise uh, um, conveniently. Uh, however, there are a number of other states that do have state beverages, none of which, of course, are cider. Massachusetts, interesting enough, has cranberry. Uh, Ohio has tomato. Uh, and I'll let you guess what Florida has. Oh, you did guess right, orange juice. So we, um, we are uh, now going to join that, that number, plus a number of other states, I might add, have milk as their beverage. Having cider, the, um, the beverage of the state, uh, will allow us to e even support the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the presence of heritage. As a matter of fact, we've coined a phrase, try apple cider and taste a piece of our heritage. The cider mill is open from late August to mid-November, Wednesday through Sunday, 9 to 5. Events are showcased throughout the season, so come visit this family-owned and run cider mill. There's no experience like it.